amazing artist. My name is Cassie Stevens. You can just call me Cassie. And today we're going to be having art class. But before we get started, I wanted to share with you a little something that I call our art class catchphrase. Our catchphrase is a little greeting that my students and I say to one another at the beginning of every art class to kind of set the mood and to get our mind in the right place for making. So when we do this, I usually say it first, my students repeat it after me. So, so that we can do it together and you can learn the words and learn the signs for it, I'll be saying it twice. The first time, just listen. The second time, you can repeat after me. Are you ready? Here we go. I make messes. All right, it's your turn. I make messes. Great. I make mistakes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, okay, your turn. But deep inside, I got what it takes. And you do. I got what it takes. I am an artist. That was awesome. Oh, I forgot to repeat it. I am an artist. There we go. Friends, before we get started, I do want to give a shout out to those people who are sponsoring this video today. And that is our friends over at Dixon Ticonderoga. Oh, if you're thinking, who are they? They are the makers behind those beautiful yellow pencils that you probably use all day long when you're writing or you're drawing. But not only that, they make paper supplies like True Ray paper. They make paint by praying. They make a ton of art supplies that you probably love and enjoy. So thank you so much, Dixon Ticonderoga, for sponsoring this video. Speaking of supplies, let's talk about what you're going to need because it's robot week. We are going to be making robots all week. And any videos that you see on any other of my social media channels will eventually end up right here. So make sure that you subscribe so that you can stay up to date on the videos that will come to you here. So today, we're gonna keep it easy. We're gonna do a basic robot drawing. So your supplies that you'll need First thing is paper. I happen to have a sketchbook. You don't have to have a sketchbook in order to make an amazing drawing, but if you do, this might be a great place for you to draw your robot. Let's talk about what other paper you can use in case you don't have a sketchbook. You could always use loose leaf paper, like from a notebook. You could use scrap paper, I'm using the back of a piece of paper here. You could even use an old cereal box if you need to. Basically, you can make art with any art supplies that you can find, but if it's something that you're not sure if you're supposed to be using, get parents' permission first. The other thing we'll be using besides paper is pencil, markers, water, and a paintbrush. All right, the other thing that we'll be using that you don't have to have on hand, but you do have to have in your mind are the elements of art. The elements of art are these magical ingredients that every artist, including you, uses to create a masterpiece. So what are the elements of art? Well, it's funny you should ask because I'm about to tell you. They are, why don't you say it with me, line. We're using a lot of lines to create our robot today. Shape. There's two kinds of shapes. There's geometric shapes, like circles and squares, diamonds, stars, and then there's organic shapes, shapes you would find in nature, like the shape of a leaf or the shape of a feather. We will mostly be using geometric shapes. So line, shapes, color, baby, color. Oh man, do I love color, obviously. We're gonna be using a lot of it in your robots today, or a little bit of it. It's really up to you. Line, shape, Hello, baby, color, form. Form is when you take a flat shape like a circle and you make it three-dimensional, turning it into something like a sphere. We'll be learning how to do that today too. Value is the darkness to lightness of a color, which I'll be showing you how to do with a little bit of water on your paintbrush. And texture, 
texture is something that you feel, it can also be what's called implied, meaning you can draw lines, shapes on your artwork that create the illusion of a texture. And finally, space. Space is how you show something is really close or really far in your work of art. All right, so you've got your supplies. You've got your mental supplies of the elements of art. And now we just need one more thing before we get started. And that's a pinky promise. So get that pinky out, people. Here's the deal. A lot of times when you're making a work of art, you get a little frustrated. You get a little upset with yourself. You need to take it easy, y'all. You need to chillax. Because a lot of times when you're learning how to do something new, you've never done it before. So guess what? It's not going to be easy. You're learning. And with learning, there comes what you might think are mistakes. But here's what I want you to pinky promise. You are not gonna crumple up a piece of paper. You are not gonna have an I can't do it attitude. No, no, no. This is not the time or place. You need to make sure that whatever you start, you finish. Whatever happens, you keep a good mindset because here's why. You can always start again when you're finished. And sometimes the best ideas are in the mistakes. So, pinkies out. <clears throat> I pinky promise, your turn, that no matter what, I won't give up. I will finish my drawing, I will keep a positive attitude, and I will know that I am learning. Mwah. All right, guys, I think we're ready to get started. Let's draw some robots. To begin, we're going to be using a lot of shapes. Remember those geometric and organic shapes we talked about? Well, our focus will mostly be geometric shapes. So this is how we're going to start by drawing our robot's head. I'm going to show you some ideas that you could draw for your robot's head. Maybe a circle would be a great shape. Perhaps a square would be the perfect geometric shape. I'm just trying to get your wheels turning so you can think about your robot. Maybe a half circle. This is like my favorite shape to use when I'm drawing robots. Or a really tall rectangle. I know that you're going to think of a bunch of other geometric shapes for you to use for your robot. These are the ones that I've come up with. Now, when you get ready to draw them on your piece of paper, you need to think about something called composition. Composition is where an artist places something. Imagine if I'm about to draw the head of my robot and I decide I want to draw a square. If I made the square really very small, it would be difficult for me to draw my robot's face. If I made the square really, really big, then I would mostly have a work of art that's filled with my robot's head and not much else like his body. What I like to do sometimes is draw with my finger, a little bit of what I call ghost drawing. This gives me an idea on the composition, on the size and the placement. All right, so I think I have a good idea. I'm just going for it with my marker. I'm drawing with my marker on its side so it makes a nice, thick line, and there we go. That was easy. All right, now let's talk about the parts on the robot's head. Again, I'm going to be using geometric shapes. I think I'll in fact erase this circle so I can draw on this other one a little bit better. Let's see, maybe I'll use a couple of tall rectangles on top of the robot's head. I'm just kind of coming up with some ideas Maybe there's um, a little squiggle that connects one of those rectangles to the other. He's got some wires sticking out. Perhaps there's a curve with another curve inside. Those are his robot ear sensors. Oh, that looks pretty good. And of course, I love to draw different patterns and lines and designs. There we go. Maybe on this one, there's a little box on the side and perhaps another little rectangle that comes up. He's not going to be as symmetrical. I'm gonna put a couple of buttons there. And yeah, so think about what different kind of shapes you can add to each one of these to give your robot some variety, to make your robot a little bit different. 
Okay, so I've got a couple of ideas. I think I'm ready to draw on this one. I really like this idea of it not being symmetrical. So maybe I'll put one there and then something here that's totally different. Maybe a little gadget over here for his ear sensors. Maybe another one there. Yeah, oh, I think I'll draw some designs borrowing an idea from that one. Cool, okay, now I'm ready for the face. Wow, so, so many options. Again, I'm gonna draw my dry erase board. Maybe he's a Cyclops. Who has had it? He is a robot that is, I am over it. Look at my face, I am not amused. Whereas this guy, he's just gonna have these really long, shiny rectangles of eyes. You can't really see how this robot is feeling. He's kind of an emotionless robot. This one, this is gonna be like, I think, my Mr. Cool robot. There we go, I'm gonna make his sunglasses a little shiny. So think about what kind of personality you can give your robot. That's what's going to make each one of them really unique. All right, so on this one, I'm gonna give this one some glasses because I wear glasses. So I'm gonna draw a little couple of circles there and maybe, so I drew two circles. Maybe I'll add a little semicircle in there. Color, baby, color. And then if these are glasses, I'm going to connect, connect. Mine, I'm thinking it might be Professor Robot, who's at your service and is going to be doing all of your homework for you. Wouldn't that be amazing? All right, now the mouth. This guy, I already know. He's gonna be pretty happy. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two curved lines. Maybe I can draw some lines inside like that. But what could you do? Maybe it's got a rectangle for a mouth. This is gonna be a baby bot. So he's got one little tooth in his mouth. There we go. How about this guy? He's Mr. Cool. There we go. Look at that. Suddenly they have a personality. And this robot, meh, over it. All right, Jeff guy. There we go. Now comes time for the body. So when it comes to the body, before you do that, I'm going to draw two little lines for the neck. Ooh, I almost forgot my favorite way to show emotion. There we go, eyebrows. All right, so next up comes the body. Do I want my robot to have a really long torso? Because if he does, then the legs will end up being really short. And if I give him a really short torso, then he's gonna end up with these really long legs. Both of those ideas are great. I just have to decide which one I want for my robot. Again, I'm thinking about variety. What can make my robot really unique and different? Hmm, I think I'll go with a horizontal line, one of my elements of art, and bring my lines down diagonally bringing it inward diagonally, and then maybe I will connect like this. Let's say I'm gonna focus on this one to give you a couple of other ideas for what you could do for your robot. Maybe your robot doesn't have a short neck. Maybe your robot has a really long neck. It's possible, and if it's gonna need to bend, you might wanna add some lines right there. And then perhaps it's got, I don't know, a big semicircle kind of a body. Why not? The cool thing about making these robots is the sillier, the better. Now, on the inside of the torso, you can start to add the details of your robot. I love to always draw a little heart inside my robot. There we go. And then you can add dials and switches and buttons and on and off and a keyboard and a little slot to show the heart monitor. It's up to you. The more unique things you add, the better. All right, this one's shaping up pretty good. Next up, I'm going to work on the arms. It could have two arms or it could have a bunch of arms. I'm gonna stick with two for this one. I'm gonna draw a curve line that goes up and another curve line that goes up. Ooh, these arms are long. The cool thing is, is if you're drawing along with me, here or here, and if I ever go too fast, or you miss something, 
If I'm going too fast, you can just hit the pause button. And if you miss something, well, of course, you can just rewind me a little bit and I'll repeat myself. All right, I love to draw little pinchers. I make a backwards letter C, doot, doot, and connect. He looks like he's scratching his head. Maybe he's getting an idea. All right, and my other one, I think I'll do it the same, but going in the opposite direction. Another one coming down. There we go. Boop, boop. I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of like to add some side effects or sound effects when I'm doing this. So if it helps you, go for it. All right, this guy, he's going to have lots of arms. He's one of those robots that can do so many things at once. It's almost like he's got crazy octopus arms. They're going to even be the kind that are retractable. You know what I love to do is I love to write stories. There is a great book called The Wild Robot that's all about a robot, but you could write your own story. Why not come up with a name for your robot, a job for your robot, and what kind of predicament could your robot get him or herself into? Maybe they end up eating your homework and you have to take your robot to school to explain it to your teacher. Or perhaps you build your own robot out of different parts and sometimes it behaves and then sometimes it doesn't. The cool thing about writing a story is the choice is yours. Okay, next up, I think I will add some legs. I'm gonna give him a leg that comes down. Another one that comes down, and I wanna have something that makes him really silly, so I'm gonna give him these great, big, stinky robot feet. Do you think a robot's feet stink? I don't know. I don't know, and he's gonna be like doing a little dance. What do you say? He's got one foot that comes up, he's tapping it. He's playing some music while he's doing my homework. That's what he's doing. I don't know if that's a good idea, robot. I don't want you to get any of my math problems wrong. I wanna show what he's made out of. So I'm gonna add a couple of lines to show the bolts. Maybe he's constructed that way. I could add those on my face, but for now, I think I'll just keep those on the feet. This guy, I think I'm gonna make him be on wheels. So I'm gonna draw a letter U, and then another letter U, and then I'll draw lines. Remember we talked about texture? These are the texture of the wheels, right? Now granted, if you touched it, it doesn't have a texture. That's why this is called implied texture. I'm giving you the idea that it looks as though it would have a texture. Better draw some more on here. There we go. Okay, now that that's all finished, I'm gonna show you my favorite trick. Remember how I said you're going to need a little bit of water and a paintbrush? Because I used water-based markers. Water-based markers means this trick will work. If you use something that isn't a water-based marker, meaning you use a permanent marker, this trick might not work. To get this trick to work, you just put a little water on your brush, paint over your marker to, I'm gonna call it wake up the marker. What it does is it makes your marker turn into a kind of paint. I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this to make the neck look like a cylinder go around all these parts. Later on when this dries, I could even add more color with markers and then just have that color be flat. So maybe I'll color inside of those two things, coloring my heart maybe a little bit red. If I want this to look three dimensional, I'm just gonna paint a little bit right there at the top and then paint a little bit right here at the bottom. All right, I'm gonna speed up this video so that you can watch me paint a little faster. To make your robot look a little bit three-dimensional, all you have to do is add water. Isn't that amazing? Now, like I said, this only works if you have water-soluble markers. What that means is they're not permanent. The water is waking up the marker and turning it into paint. What I like to do is paint right on top of the marker lines to kind of wake up the marker and then drag that marker paint towards the middle. Sometimes I like to only do it around the edges of things like the arms so that it creates the illusion of the form known as a cylinder, but you can do it anywhere you like. When I'm finished, I decided to add a little bit more designs to the background. 
One of my favorite things to do is practice drawing my favorite lines. I love a good old zigzag, a spiral, and a loop-de-loop. -loop. So I just wanted to show those lines to add a little variety in the background behind my robot. My robot has a lot of the same color, has a lot of straight lines. So to make something a little different, to make him stand out, I thought I would add this variety of lines. Once again, I'm just adding a little bit of water on top of those lines to turn it into paint. Now, if you add the water and nothing happens, don't you worry. Sometimes it takes a moment for the marker to wake up. Give it time for the marker to spread out and turn into paint. Sometimes if it doesn't work, well, maybe it's because you used a permanent marker, in which case, no problem. You could either use paint or you could just leave it as is. I'm sure it's amazing. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a great time working on your robot and I would love to see your robot. So feel free to email me a picture of the robot that you made. You can find me at artclasswithcassie at gmail.com or you can share on Instagram if you like. You can use the hashtag artclasswithcassie. Thanks guys. I'll see you again real soon. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep up with all videos art makerin right here.